Welcome back to another episode of Decentralized Chain. It's for Oz. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, subscribe on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, hit the like button. Let's get this video noticed. And uh, don't forget to join us in the Telegram community as well. Plenty of people sharing content there before it even hits YouTube. So Bitcoin. Bitcoin yesterday did take a bit of a dive. So let's go and have a little look. But before we do, crypto market still pretty much remains somewhat unchanged, although we are seeing a bit of a recovery across the alts, specifically Helium, Kadena, Quant, Phantom, 17% up Theta. So we're slowly seeing some of the alts recovering, whether I feel that it's going to be a massive recovery, not quite yet, not quite yet until Bitcoin, until we get a bit of stability on the Bitcoin price, alts are going to continue to bleed and we will see some of these bounces, but I suspect they will be short lived. But the question is, is the Bitcoin bottom in? Well, let's go back to our 200 weekly moving average. Now, this has held strong support pretty much throughout the history of Bitcoin to date. Every time we get close to the 200 moving average, it generally does act as solid support and we do see a rally upwards in terms of price movement. We are there. We are right there now. We are toying with this figure. Now, whether it will hold, it's a different story. Whether this long trending trend line will be invalidated remains to be seen. Saying that, also looking at the Bitcoin, Bitcoin rainbow chart, again, we haven't really quite hit the fire cell yet. And that's pretty much floating just under 20,000, which also, interestingly enough, does coincide with the all time high of 2017. And we're still not there yet. We are not there yet. And the other thing to sort of bear in mind also is that we're looking for some of that capitulation volume when we hit these bottoms, when we sort of go back to where we had the COVID drop, which would be back then in sort of March 2020, massive volume coming in, buying that up, big volume. The same goes when we actually dropped from the first peak, which was you know, around the 64K, yeah, 64K mark. Again, once we came all the way back down to around, what do we have? It was around the sort of 30K mark. We saw massive volume coming in to buy that up. And then we had our uptrend back up to the all time highs. Similarly, here, we're not getting the same levels of those volumes coming in yet which still leads me to believe that there is still a bit more downside to come until we see that. We saw, you know, a big bit of volume coming in at around 26, which then ultimately pushed it out to about 32, but then wasn't really able to sustain it since then. So that's what makes me think we still have a bit more downside to come in because the volume just isn't quite there yet. But also looking at some of our secondary measures, looking even looking on the RSI, we are pretty much heavily within the oversold territory as well. So we're close, not quite there yet, but not financial advice. This wouldn't be a bad opportunity to start DCA, DCAing in bit by bit. So look, we're not going to catch the bottom, that's for sure. But you can try to get as close as you can with our good old friendly DCA. So let's see. On other news, we have also Goldman Sachs begins trading at derivative products tied to Ethereum. So this is interesting because ultimately what they're doing is they're expanding their client facing crypto offerings with derivative products, but this time linked to Ethereum, which does make you think, is there something that they're expecting that's going to be happening because now they're offering this to their clients. Doesn't mean that their clients have direct exposure to Ethereum. What it ultimately means is that the derivative product allows the holder to have exposure to the asset without having to hold it. So again, they're not really buying Ethereum off the market, but it is tracking the price somewhat. And the payouts are based on the price 
of Ethereum at the time of settlement in cash. But saying that, you know, is there something that JP Morgan is hinting at by now including Ethereum in their offerings? Considering that we've got the merge coming up around the corner, albeit the market isn't doing great, but clearly to start offering this to your clients, you must have some level of confidence in terms of the price of Ethereum going into the future. But also you need to bear in mind that while we have the price movements and the volatility in the short term, if you have a long-term mindset, a much higher time horizon, in all honesty, all of these Bitcoin, Ethereum is going to be on the up anyway. On other news, we've also got Nexo. They've proposed, as I mentioned yesterday in my video, proposing a buyout of Celsius assets as the crypto lending rival halts withdrawals. Obviously, these guys over at Celsius are certainly going through a period of instability in terms of their assets. And, you know, I really do hope something comes of this and does get resolved because the last thing I'd want to see is people lose money because Celsius is going down. In fact, from what I read earlier today, they've obviously put up more collateral in order to bring down their margin call. But the problem with these margin calls is eventually, no matter how hard you try, they always end up getting called upon. This is the thing. It just happens to be Sod's law in terms of the way it works. But Nexo here is obviously offering to buy out some of the qualifying remaining assets, you know, which, which could be a good thing. It just depends whether they want to take Nexo up on their offer. The other part that we're seeing here now also is amongst all of this volatility, Tron's stablecoin is wobbling. That's right. It is losing its peg. In fact, it fell as low as 91 cents. So that's a good 9% down from a dollar. This really does somewhat signal the whole Terra UST vibe to me, although they're injecting more capital in here to ultimately defend Tron, defend the actual peg itself. I don't know. I think if you've got stables locked up in USD, which is the algorithmic stable coin for Tron, I would certainly just consider maybe moving some of it elsewhere just to be a bit more risk averse at the end of the day. You know, the, the, the issue is, is that their actual stable coin, you know, is similar to the Terra stable coin. And albeit this time around, it's obviously backed by TRX, it's backed by USDC, it's also backed by Bitcoin. You know, the two main out of the three that are backed are susceptible to volatility, Bitcoin and TRX, which ultimately does affect their basket of collateral they have in order to back their stablecoin. So one, I would certainly watch, hence, you know, what we saw before in the past with Terra USD. Now, in other news, we've got BlockFi. They're cutting their staff by 20%. And we're going to start seeing more of this across the board. We're going to, we've already seen it with Coinbase. We're in a bear market now. And these large platforms that we have here are pretty much now looking to weather out the storm. That's what it is. Because what you'll notice is on the when we're in a bull market, there's roles, there's job adverts, there's all sorts in order to you know bring in more talent to grow whatever platform they want to grow, whatever area of crypto they want to invest in further. But now that we're heading into a bear market, at the end of the day, their reserves are not worth as much as they once were. And obviously they need to weather out the storm. So we're going to start seeing more of this in terms of large platforms like this cutting their staff. Now, I wouldn't take it as a negative at the same time. All they're doing is that they're weathering out the storm. Doesn't mean that they're going under by any means. Celsius, I'd say that's an exception. But this is what it is. This is what happens when we end up going into bear markets, when we end up hitting recessions, layoffs. You know, people will need to survive at that point. Anyway, that's all I have to share for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Obviously, subscribe to the channel. Join us on Telegram. Follow me over on Twitter to stay up to date with all the latest information. And I will see you on the next episode.